the name of the Lord through intentional and intensified evangelism. The calling of the lost. The second one is the calling for the found to serve. We obey our Lord Jesus through active involvement. We would like to involve ourselves. Why? Because we have been so gifted. Why? Because the grace of God is so full in our lives. And why? Because He has given us so much talents and so much influence and wisdom from His Word that this time we can now bring healing and a balm of touch of glory in the lives of people who are in pain, lost, and down. Therefore, we can serve right now because God has equipped us. Number three, the call for a select few to be separated unto the gospel, which is a third call. They become ministers of the gospel. What will we do with them? We will identify them. We will verify them. We will equip them. Empower them for a divine appointment of a lifetime, thus fulfilling their destiny. And this is exciting because they will be pastors. They will be teachers. They will be prophets. They will be missionaries even to the ends of the world. And therefore, we will make sure that the empowering and equipment that they need is given to them that they might fulfill this once in a lifetime divine appointment that God has for them. And God bless them as they serve the Lord in their callings. Now, if you have your Bibles with you, please turn to Ephesians chapter 2. We are studying this passage of Scripture, but today we will, most, uh, uh, we will look at uh, one verse that is verse 10 because it calls us to be uh, understanding our call to do good works and to serve. But before we go to verse 10, it is very important that we understand the context thereof. Therefore, we would like to read the first nine verses. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 9, this is what the Bible says. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Paul was just very clear here. You have a past. You have a before life. This was your life before. Dark, disobedient, damned, and doomed. This was your life. You are dead. You are a sinner. You have no hope. And then he moves on in verse 5. Oh, sorry, verse 3. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Amumang kita, parihas man lang. We were feelings-oriented. We were very selfish like the rest. We were by nature objects of wrath. We were thinking about ourselves. We were just disobedient. Palarihas lang kita tanan-tanan to a point that all of us are actually just waiting our punishment. All of us are actually objects of wrath. Meaning to say it is a target of punishment. It is a target of doom because all of us are disconnected from God. That was your life before. May one time may study ka evangelist nga nagabot sa Bacolod City. I think it was in the 1970s and, 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 and uh, he, he was an American and therefore they needed a translation over at the Bacolod Public Plaza. And the American was so fiery and he said, uh, you know what? You have to know Jesus Christ. And then the Ilonggo translator said, Kabalubala ka mo nano kilalan inyo makilala si Ginong Hiso Kristo. If you will not repent, Siling sang ilunggo nga manugwali. Kun hindi ka bu maghinulsol, the wrath of God will fall on you. Ang ilaga sang Dios madagdag sa inyo. Of course. <laughs> no, it is not the wrath of God that nga ilaga sang Dios, but rather the anger of God. Ang kasingkal sang Dios. Can you imagine how God would uh, express His anger? To a person that is disconnected and disobedient? Well, we were just objects of wrath. Well, but because of His great love for us. Praise the Lord. God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. There you go. There You, you had a, a life that is called a before life, but the cross came in. Jesus Christ came in. And because of that, there is now a new life, a born from above life, a changed life, a renewed life, a regeneration took place. 
because of His love, because of His grace, we have been saved. And then the Bible continues, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages He might show the incomparable riches of His grace expressed in His kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Not 